We're seeing people stand up in record numbers. They're standing up for revival, but they're also standing up against mask mandates and they're refusing the vaccine. I just don't think uh, this, uh, this administration thought that would happen. Is that, is that, am I seeing that accurately or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't think that they expected uh, this much um, pushback, really it push back really what it is. It's just standing on our constitution and on uh, uh, our freedoms as Americans. So we're just doing some common sense things here. But, um, you know, I'd really encourage Christian common sense conservatives to step it up because, uh, you know, you give them an inch and they'll take a mile. And we've seen that already. And that then pertains to these mandates that are coming down that are stripping us of the very, very basic rights that we have as Americans. So uh, we can't be hesitant and we can't just preach to the choir. We need to get out there and exert the influence that we do have. Yeah, amen to that. Uh, it, tell me, uh, you know, I ask this usually with every guest that comes on. I may have asked you this before when you were on before, Governor Palin, but how do you see the most effective way for Christian conservatives to stand up? What should they be doing? And I'm asked that every single day. What can we do? Um, my own kids were asking me that the other day, like, Mom, things are going to hell in a handbasket. What are we going to do? They didn't use that word, though. But anyway, I, I want to encourage everybody, <clears throat> again, to not just assume that we can just be telling each other what the problem is. We need to get out there. I take a lot of heat for being a bit involved in pop culture and in, in some aspects of it. And I try to tell people, no, we need to infiltrate and influence pop culture because everything is downstream from pop culture. The economy, the way things are marketed, the way businesses are run, certainly politics, everything's downstream. So when you see somebody say, a real celebrity, if you see them stand up for what it is that we believe in, again, just basic freedom, American rights and, and Judeo-Christian principles, when you see, we need to support that celebrity, that superstar who's bold enough to be out there doing that. When you support them and they, they are then knowing that they have public support for to continue to stand on truth, then their spine is stiffened and then others around them, their spine is stiffened. That is a way that we can start really affecting the change that has got to come because things are, they're going downhill so rapidly, it, uh, I, it should be making everybody's head spin. It does. I agree with that. Uh, Lance, you know, you heard her say when she mentioned uh, pulp, pop culture, I mean, that's really, you know, we were just talking the other night about, uh, or day, I don't remember what it was, we did so much TV, but the uh, we were talking about the Seven Mountains and the Mountain of Media. It's a different, uh, she's using different words, but that's really the same thing we're talking about. We have to be involved in pop culture. We have to be involved in the media. We've got to be involved in social media. Let your views be expressed. But, you know, I think, uh, and I think Governor Palin said it this way with get some stiffer spines out there. Um, yeah. But we've really got to see some people stand up and be willing to take the hits. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. And the nice thing about this, uh, Gene, is that if you look at the Seven Mountain strategy, that the reason why I got involved with Seven Mountains is because Christianity is salt. And if the salt loses its contact with culture, then downstream from culture is going to be politics. And, uh, and of course, the culture itself is downstream from the church, because whether we, whether we want to own it or not, we are the ones that have the authority to proclaim truth and to quicken the conscience of the nation. When the lights go out in a country like America, it's because conscience has become darkened. And it becomes darkened because the only thing that can quicken the conscience is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So when pulpits stop becoming prophetic and challenging culture, when it starts trying to accommodate culture or be popular with culture, it stops the business of uh, arresting the decay of culture. And then you end up with probably the most insidious part of our deterioration is the academic arena, because that's where the youth are being discipled to become adversaries to capitalism and to freedom of religion. Amen. Hey, that's right. Uh, all right. So we're talking about pop culture. We're talking about standing up. Um, <clears throat> James O'Keefe with Project Veritas uh, recently came out with another story, Whistleblower. And, you know, normally I'm not a whistleblower fan. I'm like, people usually have some sort of something to gain by it. But I'm telling you, I, I, I'm thankful 
for getting the inside track on so many uh, stories that he's been able to break. But watch this. Talk about, uh, you know, peer pressure. Listen to what this nurse had to deal with. I've seen dozens of people come in with an adverse reaction. Yeah, it's really sad. She had just come back from surgery from leave. So what are we looking at here? You're looking at me transferring her um, to uh, a higher level of care that could handle her condition. And this is a, col a colleague at your hospital who got sick. She didn't want to take it because of her religious beliefs. And she was coerced into taking it. Why are you choosing to blow the whistle? It's not what a lot of people would do. They're scared, they're afraid. Are you afraid? I wouldn't necessarily say I'm afraid because my faith lies in God and not man. This is evil at the, the highest level. You have the FDA, you have the CDC, that are both supposed to be protecting us. Are you afraid they're gonna retaliate against you? Yeah. I'm a federal employee. What other federal employees do you see coming out? But you put your faith in God. Amen. She puts her faith in God. And, and you know, now this, the, her, her uh, colleague passed away. This is back on the 28th. Her colleague passed away because she, she actually said she had religious concerns, but she didn't stand up. And imagine if she had had the, I don't know, the friends, the colleagues, whatever, to be able to encourage her to not do it. But she was pressured into this, Governor Palin. There's no, there's no doubt about it. There was absolute pressure to take a, a uh, to take the jab. And, and you know when we, and when we talk about this, just so you know, uh, we're. I have my own personal views about the vaccine. You have yours, and we don't have to talk about what our views are. However. I don't believe, and most Americans don't believe, the government should be mandating what shot I get or what uh, vaccine I have to get in order to even function in society. Governor, please. Yeah, federal government has absolutely no say in, um, in, in what we would put in our bodies in terms of medicine or not. That is a, a free choice. They're so off base on this. But okay, I respect that the, the gal that you just showed, she had her religious beliefs affected her decision making on whether to get a shot or not. And I say this as a born again, spirit filled, holy roller, Jesus freak, Bible thumping Christian. My religious beliefs aren't affecting my decision to not take the, uh, the shot. I already had COVID. And the Fauciest had told us, remember, that if you had COVID, well, then you will have this natural immunity that would be even stronger than something that would be injected into you. I'm standing on that. That's what the science says. And you know how I know that I'm right on this because I'm getting the crud beat out of me every time I say it, every time I explain why I'm not going to get a shot and they are not going to make me get a shot. Um, that's what they told us. And granted, they are the most inconsistent shysters on TV, Fauci and those guys telling us one thing one day, another thing the other day. However, they did say 27 times more immune you will be if you had recovered from COVID. That's right. The language shifts what's being put out there. All right, you ready? <clears throat> Instead of lockdown, say stay at home order. Instead of national duty, personal responsibility. Coronavirus. No pandemic. Hospitalization rates. Get this. Deaths. They don't want you to say hospitalization rate. They want you to say the deaths. Uh, Operation Warp Speed. The standard process. Consequences of not taking the vaccine versus the benefits of taking the vaccine. Predictability, certainty, a return to normal. Security, safety. Historic Advanced, groundbreaking, the world's leading experts, America's leading experts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Mario was saying, and you need to go, you need to go get this. I don't know when they'll be able to get it on the website. Somebody call Kate, get it done. The, uh, you've got to see what's happening because the language, you brought up a great point, and I, I'm going to get the governor to speak to it. When we change our language, we start to desensitize us to the very thing that we're standing against. So we have got to see some things happen. Please, Governor Palin, uh, comment. 
Oh, I'm so glad that you brought this up because, okay, for the critics out there who are watching, uh, this is going to be their takeaway. When I say this is all about thought control, ultimately, because when the language is hijacked, people become afraid of speaking, of articulating in a certain way, because you're going to get clobbered for saying um, hospital rates instead of death or the other examples that you gave there. So <clears throat> you start guarding your, your speech so that, you know, you, you won't get beat up by um, those who are out there. What they want you to do is and not only be hesitant to say the words and the phrases, but to not even think them anymore so that you wouldn't be tempted to say them. Ultimately, and of course, COVID, it's not about a virus. It's about control and um, everything that's going on right now. And Gene, I hope that your viewers and Mario and Lance and, and Hank, oh my gosh, you guys are doing such an amazing job. I want the flocks. I want those who hear you and read about you and see you like I do. I follow you guys. I want everybody to know this is just another distraction. The distractions that are going on, including the language changes, it's, it's to keep us from seeing clearly what's happening and what's going to happen to America. For instance, the inflation that is going to slam us like no time in our history. It's going to blow everybody away when this happens. Um, so many things that are even bigger than COVID. Um, all of this stuff is just distractions. And the language changes goes right on along with uh, they trying to, you know, put blinders on us and make us hesitant and sit down and sh shut up through these distractions while um, even bigger things are in the works. Yeah, ag agreed. All right, listen, um, I've got to keep going. I've only got a little bit more time left with uh, Governor Palin, but I want to play this clip. Let's move to the next topic. Uh, let's talk about what's going on at the border. Watch this clip from our friend Tucker. The United States government holds tremendous sway over the Mexican economy. So with a single phone call, Joe Biden could have made absolutely certain that the Mexican government sent these migrants back to where they came from. But Joe Biden has not called to do that. And he hasn't because he wants these migrants here in the United States, and so they are coming. He did this on purpose. Thousands of Haitians, as you just saw, have swarmed Del Rio, Texas, which is not a big town. As of this morning, there were close to 7,000 so-called family units under the bridge there. More than 300 of those units included a pregnant woman. All of these migrants, says the Biden administration, will be allowed to stay in the United States, no questions asked. And the children born here will, of course, instantly become American citizens. None of these people, you should know this because it's telling, will undergo any kind of background check, like the background check you endure if you were to try to, say, buy a 12-gauge, according to your constitutional rights. None of them either will be forced to abide by vaccine mandates. So you need the shot to work as a nurse or for the sanitation department or anywhere. But you don't need a shot to come into our country illegally at the request of the Biden administration. Uh, Governor Palin, this is, uh, it's, it's, I don't want to say aggravating, it doesn't, it's not visceral enough uh, to how I feel about this. I mean, we've been seeing the tens of thousands of people at the, uh, under that bridge there near Del Rio, and it's uh, horrible conditions, yet there's nothing happening. There's nothing happening, and the truth is, I can't, I had to go through the third degree to fly to Hawaii, yet if I can do anything I want, if I just come across the border, uh, what, what's going to happen with our border? It sure seems to be a plot, Governor. Right. So the tens of thousands of people illegally coming over our border and not a mask in sight and not an immunization in sight, and yet like my little boy who has special needs in a special needs classroom, very, very um, sensitive to, well, a bunch of sensory things. He, he has a Down syndrome. He's forced to wear a mask all day now. Again, uh, that got ramped up recently. Um, <clears throat> I would think that anybody who is personally affected by this inconsistency that's coming down the pike from on high in D.C., <clears throat> When you're personally affected by it, especially, you uh, you certainly should should rise up and speak. But a practical solution here, Gene, is the border state governors have got to do it because the feds aren't going to do it. They are the ones who need to call in National Guard. They're commanders of the National Guard. That's what a governor is. Uh, you need to build the wall. You need to do whatever you can. 
putting your state's resources and your state residents will support this. Uh, don't wait for the feds to do it. We've been waiting for years now. Uh, Trump, he fixed the problem, but then it got undone again under Biden purposefully. So border state governors, ramp it up, secure the border because the feds aren't going to do it. Yeah, Governor Palin, you said something very profound that I think a lot of people don't know, and I want you to say it again. Governors are the commander of the National Guard? Yes, in their state, yes. And they have resources, and they can call them up and get them out there. And, I, you know, National Guardsmen, too, they are awesome. And they're ready and willing and able to get out there and serve the public. That's what they signed up for. That is what they signed up for. And I know here in Texas, it's quite contentious with our current governor and what all he's done. All right, we got to go to a break, but Governor Palin, we're going to let you go. I want to give you the opportunity. Last comments, go ahead. Oh, I just love you guys so much. And I thank you so much. You're, uh, you literally have the pulpit. So I just encourage you to continue <clears throat> speaking so boldly. And I just pray for you that there's manifestations of answers to your own prayers so that you guys know that it's worth it. So that you know that if it weren't for you being bold, being um, so articulate, so intelligent in your arguments, uh, <clears throat> how much worse off everybody would be. So please keep it up. I just... Love all you wow. guys. Gene, you're doing you. an amazing job. Thank you, Governor. Listen, sarahpalin.com. Keep up with our friend, Governor Sarah Palin. We love you. want you back anytime you can, Governor. Thank you for joining us.